one of the things that I always say is I don't have all the answers uh, for this. So if you guys have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you don't get one of these, or you ever want to contact me, just we're up here. So what I'm going to talk about is, of course, the old line play. But I'm going to get from a Sunday to game time on Friday in this presentation and how we get there um, step by step uh, for me and, and kind of our staff of how we go through. So I've had the uh, great fortune to work with Pat Rice uh, since he became the head coach there at Wanakee. Uh, he hired me the same day that he got hired and I've been with him ever since. Uh, so we've been there together for the last 24 years. Uh, guy, guy's great, there's a lot of football. The one thing that he will, he will take uh, thoughts, suggestions uh, of what we're doing and game planning week to week. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to hear Mark, think my nickname is Marty. Marty, what the fuck are you talking about? So I got the F on. And he'll throw that away and we'll go next. And so uh, when, we're, when we're discussing things during the week, uh, he calls me the run coordinator. I don't know if I'm even some sort of coordinator. I just take care of the boys up front. So, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go step by step about what we do. Um, and then on Wednesday, typically for us, Wednesday is our O-line drills. And that's when I'm going to get all, to, all the drills. So um, on Sunday, so what we do is, before we get to Monday, on Sunday what I do is uh, we always have an O meeting and a D meeting and a special teams meeting. Uh, we typically don't see our families on Sunday. Saturday we're getting all the film, or Friday night we're getting all the film for the next opponent. And it's our job as a staff to break down the film. And so that when we get into our meetings, we know what we're all talking about. We have thoughts, suggestions, and going on from there. So, so on Monday, on Sunday, uh, the first thing we'll start off is we'll have a special teams meeting with all the staff, go through that, uh, game plan it, and then the defense will go in one room and the offense will go in the other. And of course, Pat's in charge of both, but there's a deep order that we have. And then we sit down and we go through all of our run, all of our throw game, and then we're all set, we go on there. So it's important, I think, as especially an offensive line coach, of knowing what the scheme you're going to see for that week. What their stunts are, uh, what their movement up front is, um, and what to expect. Because if you don't know that, then the kids aren't going to know that, and I don't want the kids to be surprised coming into the game that day. So, so on Monday, what we do is we have our whole line meeting. Um, we start off with this. And I explained to them all the new fronts that they're going to see. I draw it up. I did something new this year is I actually gave them a packet. And so they sat down kind of like you guys are here. And I had all the new stuff up on the whiteboard. And they were writing it down. Because I don't know if they're visual learners, if they're hands-on, if they need both. So I have it all up there. We have all the new fronts that we're going to see. And then all the new stunts. I've drawn them all up. And by the way, I, a lot of you have huddle. If you don't have huddle, you should get huddle. And then I've been tagging them through all of my film breakdown. And I tagged them all, and I categorize it being the fronts, or the stunts, the blitz pickup, the fronts that we're going to see, and I have them all separated so that each night, depending on what we've what we're got going, I'll show you, uh, of what the kids are going to see. So then, uh, player, player evaluation, I'll go through and I'll say, hey, uh, 76, D tackle, plays a three technique lot, he's a spinner. So we, I gotta make sure that I'm working on spinning that week with our guys. Or, or, hey, the kid loves to rip and then fight back underneath. So different things that I think that you as a coach needs to uh, understand so that your kids don't, uh, don't get caught with their pants down on, on Friday night. Um, any of our new play adjustments that we've got. Some weeks we're not running certain plays, some weeks we are. So again, that's what we're doing for on Sunday nights. Um, and then I'll write all the new plays, adjustments down the board, and they're writing down. Then from there we go into a big giant team meeting. That's where we usually talk about uh, all the new specials that we put in. Then we go through all the D plan on that type. Then we'll go out of the field and we'll go into our group D, what we'll call so Monday's more of a defensive emphasis, and we get all the new schemes in that we're putting down. And then we'll go team D, put it all together. Sometimes, depending on what our D coordinator is doing, sometimes we'll do team D first, and then we'll go into group 
depending on how he wants to package it. And then uh, we're going to go into Team O on that day. I, I was just on uh, a Glacier Clinic, those e-web webinars or whatever, and there was a guy from New Jersey on here, and he says he never films his practice as a high school coach. And I'm like, not even your line? He says, no. Nope. He said, how do you make corrections? Don't need to. I'm like, really? I, I don't know how you can't make corrections. So for me, I'm always filming. I'm filming every day. Because if you're the O-line coach and you're trying to watch six different guys, including the tight ends, there's no way. You can't see what's happening on the front side. You can't see what's happening on the back side. Maybe I'm more worried about the center this time or what happened on each tackle. And if you're not <coughs> filming things, I think you're missing out. Somehow, some way, you got to be able to film. Way back when, what I did is I bought a 16-foot A-frame ladder. It's huge. It's big, probably weighs 300 pounds, 200 It weighs a lot. And I have my managers run it out, middle field, put it up, and we have an offense going this way, we have an offense going that way, and they're on, on top filming. You turn and film here, turn and film here, turn and film here, turn and film here. And if we're later in the year and we only have one group, or I'm more worried about our ones and twos, we're only filming that segment. We now, within the last six years, have put deer stands on the end of our goalposts, just connected to it. So I'm always filming. So on this Monday, we're going through all of our new run and all of our new throw adjustments. We film it. And, and I'm actually the only one that looks at it. I mean, I, I share it with the staff, but I, I don't think anybody else looks at it. So then Tuesday, it's another defensive emphasis. We go through our pre-practice. Now, our pre-practice, we call it a hog meeting. We have a hog heaven where we call it up in the field. And that's the area where these kids that are not on the specials, kickers, punters, snappers, whatever, holders. It's just me and my offensive team. And I go through all the corrections from that night, from Monday night. Now what I've been able to do is have, we're, we're not two platoon, but some of my guys are all my offensive guys. So instead of now doing this huddle thing, I'm in the locker room and I have seven clips that I need to show the kids from practice last night. I've already had them tagged. You're watching a lot of film and you're going through those things with the kids. So if you can't do it in the locker room, you go out and hog heaven, you put the bags down, and I go through all the stuff, and I say, okay, here are the corrections that we missed. We gotta make sure, and I've got it written down, or on huddle, I've got them tagged. So I set up the defense in front, use the bags, uh, I review all the fronts and stunts again, and uh, all the adjustments of play. Then at this time, we go into group D. This is where my offensive line goes against the defensive line, we're working our pass rush. Okay, because it's still a defensive emphasis, but if I know Nick Clements, who's only playing offensive tackle, doesn't do any reps on defense, he's going to be playing tackle, and he's going to do the patch rush. So anytime we have a tackle, left side, right side, he's working it. He's constantly working. So he's trying to get better. This is the only chance, besides in Team O, where we get a chance to do any sort of pass rush. So this is a big emphasis for us. Then next we go into Team D. Sometimes we don't do Team D, sometimes we do. Just depends on what the D coordinator is doing. And then we go into Group O. This is our inside-outside drill, where we're just running offensive plays. I spoke at a clinic a few years back, and one of the coaches from um, Sheboygan North heard me speak, and he said, hey, coach, when you do this inside, you told us that you're running about 100 plays in this thing. He says, I couldn't believe you. He came up to our practice and goes, now I understand why you guys are running. So every night when I film, and this inside, we're running plays. We don't huddle up. We're at the line of scrimmage, offensive line against the defensive front. Pat might call 26 power. Quarterback turns, says 26 power. Set, hut, bang, next play. So we'll run two to the right. We'll run two plays to the left. So we'll go tight right, tight left. Tight right, two, tight left, bang. And it's constant, it's fire. So every night I'm watching, and again, this is, this is up to you, I'm watching between 60 and 140 plays a night that we're running. That's between this and our team O. And our, our, and our team O is probably only 30 plays. So this is where we get most of our run done. So during this time, what we're doing is we're running plays, but my twos or my ones are standing right behind me. And they're making the same call. Whatever play we're running, we're running ISO, our guys are calling their combos, they're looking at the schemes. My twos are standing right behind me, making the exact same call. And if I can't hear what they're saying, they're getting lit up. Because either they're screwing around or something, and they gotta be making the calls. And sometimes on clips, when I show, you can see the guy standing right behind me. 
And you can see it, hey, they're talking, they're making the scheme adjustments. Because bang, they're in, that, they're in the next play. The ones come out, they're standing right behind them. They're making the same calls. So we're in and out trying to make them, trying to get as many reps as we can. Somebody said, hey, why don't you huddle up to help the quarterback? Okay, the quarterback's just repeating what coach has called. So he's kind of getting it down. And we usually use a two-man cadence to hut instead of doing the full cadence. We're usually not using any motion at this time. So we're just trying to snap them in and out. Then we go back, we're running our T-Mo, come back up. Again, this is filmed again, depending on where we're running. Middle of the field, two groups, one group, back in the end zone. Um, and then we put in our new throw concepts again at this time. So then I come back in Wednesday. Now Wednesday is our offensive scheme day. And again, we go back, make all the corrections. By the way, if I back up a little bit. So on Sunday night, after our team meeting, I will forward out to the kids, to the O-line group, uh, all the fronts. So if we're seeing a 3-5 and a 3-4, I'll tag, I don't know, 30 plays. Bang, bang, bang. You guys need to watch this. Here's the new front we're going to come up. Monday night then, I'll throw out some corrections to them. And then I'll say, okay, here are the new fronts and stunts that you're going to see. And I'll have, I don't know, 20 different fronts and stunts, whatever they're going to see. And so that the next night they're seeing this because by Wednesday, we got to be putting all these fronts and stunts in that they're going to be seeing. But they've already seen it before. So because I, I, on Monday, I'm not going to throw it all at them because they're practicing going to look like crap. Tuesday, we kind of in, in incorporate a little bit more. And then by Wednesday, we got to go full blown. So now here is all the corrections from the night before again. Hopefully none of the same things that we did the night before. And then we get into our NEO. And of course, we're always doing specials, by the way, if you ever think about it. We've got specials in there. So, um, And now my technique, and again, am I doing this a lot after our two days, our camp stuff? No, but we are, I'm still watching it. A lot of the stuff that we're doing, we're on the white lines, one step. So we're always working our first step, six inches punch, quick hands, thumbs up. So this is just a little drill that we do. So I've got all these guys working on their stance, head up, okay? Just kind of making sure our coaches are all walking around. You can have them on lines, they're all straight going ahead, okay? So now we're doing our stance and first step here. Making sure they're just set for it. Make sure they're not too much weight going forward. Now I incorporate it, putting one hand step together. I always have our thumbs together coming out. I always give our kids a direction that we're going to step. Say, ball's going right, ball's going right, so they're stepping with the right foot. Ball's going left, ball's going left, stepping with the left foot. So I'm always doing this with our kids. I always give a command. The kids will say, hey, coach, you forgot to give us a command. Which way are we going? Going right, going right. Set hut, set hut. Just always going, going a direction. So now we're stepping, and again, depending on what age group we got, I don't, I don't know what coaching level we got here. But again, I've got my staff, JD freshman coaches walking around. This is because this is during our, our, uh, our contact days. We're doing this. So again, we're just working on one step. First step. Here's the side angle. Just trying to get our hands going together, throwing them out there as quickly as we can. Punching, hands and feet together. Then we put our second step in, and again, we're talking about always keeping our heels in the ground. I equate it to lifting, squatting. You always want your heels in the ground. Take a step, put the heel in the ground, make sure that you're hearing it. Okay, now we put the two steps together. Quick hands, punch, punch, and I don't want to hear a hop. I don't want to see a hop. It's you got to pound the step into the ground. And again, are we doing this later in the season? No, but we are working on get offs. We are working underneath the chute. Okay, then we get into a duck walk. Our duck walk is just knees bent. I try and put a dent in the floor, in the ground, in the grass. It's all slow, repetitive, just trying to get this going. Now we do it all together. We stop here and we turn around and just go the other direction. Something simple. Okay, then we put it all together. 
I always say don't show fingers. Am I saying to hold? No, but I want to be able to grab the cloth, grab the chest plate, and as we keep our thumbs up, we're just hitting and driving. Okay, now we have, uh, these are all just different great drills. Kids love them, they have fun. This is one called a six shooter. All we're trying to do is get our hands up as quickly as we can to hit the other kids. Younger kids love this one. Older kids and kids love playing this game. If you, if the object is to slap, the other guy is trying to move his hand so he doesn't get hit. Uh, another one that we have uh, for, for hands is we'll have the kid out of a stance, and this is the one that you can do in the weight room. Um, I have a huge bag of tennis balls, or you can use a medicine ball. Basically, if a kid is in a stance, I'm going to kneel it right in front of him, and I've got a ball in my hand, and I'm just throwing it right at his face, and he's got to get his hands up before he hits him in the face. So, well, okay, so you start with a tennis ball, but then the next one is to use a medicine ball. You can use your little four pound balls, and you're just sitting there, and you're down at his height, set, hit, bang, and you're just doing a chest pass at him, and he's got to get his hands up just in time before he gets it. So we're working on a quick movement out of our step. You're taking a first step, bang, trying to get your hands out, trying to catch the ball. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And it's okay if they just knock you down. It's just so that your hands are exploding out in front. So this is just a quick one when you do with your kids out of the field. So we've got the tennis ball, we've got the shooter, we've got the medicine ball. Uh, any wrestlers in here? This is a great one, the pummel drill. The pummel drill, what we do is we have a guy go over and under. And what they're trying to do is trying to get a bear hug underneath, both arms underneath. This gets intense, this gets physical. You, I typically don't do this with pads on, but the object is to get your hands underneath, get into a bear hug. Low man winch, you're just trying to work inside. Everything that we do, we try and work on inside. In here, so we're trying to get a double hand underneath. So you've got everybody lined up. You say set, hit, bang, it's on. It's it gets physical. You're gonna see some shirts torn, hands get inside. I mean, so then I'll say, okay, get a different partner. So everybody's trying to find a different partner, and you get after it again. That's a it's a great one. I love this one. <clears throat> this kid uh, in the white shirt is actually playing for Illinois State right now, uh, defensive end. I mean, it gets fit, uh, and the kid he's going against is the starting center for South Dakota State. So, I mean, that's, that was a hell of a matchup between those two. So then uh, our drill work. First one is our one-on-one -on -one drill. You can do this with a sled. You can either work the defensive guy heads, offset, offset rock, come up, bull rush, okay? So again, depending on what's going on for that week, if I know we're going to scrimmage against Verona, Verona loves to cross face us. I can't tell you how many times we're going to see that, be it on the nose, be it on the guard, be it on the tackle. So I got to work that one. So this is just our one-on-one -on -one drill. And basically the way I line it up is I'll have a group of kids here with their partner, and I'll have a group of kids here. And what I'll say is I'll say, okay, this group, you're up. And I'll have our two coaches or three coaches here, and everybody's watching the group. I'll say, ball's going right, set, hit, bang. I'll turn around. I'll turn over to this next group. Set, hit, bang. They'll go. As this group finished, they're switching. So if you were on D, you're now on O. If you're on O, you're now on D. That we're just constantly moving because that group just went. Because if you had everybody going at the same time, you can't see everybody, at least now you're seeing. And if I'm sitting here and I'm watching Johnny, and Johnny screwed up, I'll turn to Mike and I'll say, hey Mike, you got the next group, go. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting here fixing him, I'll say, okay, you're going with this rep, bang. So you're constantly having these guys go, but at the same time, they're interchanging when we're going through this. So what we'll do is we'll have this guy go bowl heads, we'll come off that way, we'll have an offset, because maybe we're seeing a lot of three techniques or one technique that week, Working that one on one. So I'll have the kids on the board, just driving straight through it. Love to keep the boards uh, because the feet get wide. A lot of kids will keep their feet in, so I have the boards and they're driving through it. So this is just our one on one drill. I can offset them. 
Okay, so when I'm working on the boards, the offset would be the kid on defense won't be straddling the board. Our offensive guy will be straddling the board. So we can have him cross face. So now you can see here, he's offset. So I've got this guy off the board. So depending on what's going on that you have, uh, you need to work that for your kids. So down here at the bottom, we got our one-on-one -on -one drill. Okay, let's see if we can rewind. So our left guard and left tackle, here's where they've got the one-on-one. -on -one. So we're not having any combos in this scheme here. So we're working it. So now basically it looks like the guy's a head technique and he's stepping inside. The DN, the five technique looks like he's outside, so we're just trying to turn him out. So again, it's, it's up to you as the coach to know what schemes you're going to be facing against these schemes. Okay, our double team drill. I love this drill because it really works rolling the hips. What this is, is again, I've got it set up so that I'm in the middle, I've got groups going here, and I've got groups going <coughs> here. And by the way, for setting up purposes, on my very first contact day, I'll say, okay, John and Steve, you guys are working together, and you guys will always be partners till the end of the season. Now, that's going to change because I might put a tight end with a tackle. Now, all of a sudden, this tackle is not my starting tackle. Now I'm going to put that tight end who might be starting with a starting tackle and try and work that way. I'll also always put an older guy with a younger guy. If I have a senior, I'm going to try and put him with a junior. If I have a sophomore, I'm going to try and put him with a senior. So our senior's trying to help coach on the fly. So again, these groups will always be the same. And then I say, hey, when we're doing our combo drill, you guys are always the same combo drill. Because otherwise, you're spending time waiting and waiting and waiting. Hey, where's my guy? Where's my... Bang, they know. Hey, we're in the combos, here we go. Or hey, we're doing our double teams, go. And they know where to go. <coughs> they got groups here, groups here, we're ready to go. So on this one, what we're trying to do <coughs> is we've got these guys set up. Um, and what we're trying to do is we are both doing like a one-on-one -on -one drill on each side, we're stepping together and how do we push pods? Bottom right, uh, play it, pause like this. There you go. So what we're trying to do here is coming together, and you see a lot of guys on all sixes, and they hit and they try and roll their hips. Well, the way I explain this to the kids, it's like tectonic plates, how our mountains hit. And what we're trying to do is to force this and roll your hips. So these two guys in the back, they're not trying to roll. It's better when you have pads on because now the guy behind can grab the back of the shoulder pads and hold it. I have his put his forearms here and we're locked right here. And then I have this knee jammed up in the guy's butt. The guy holds a pad. Okay? And those guys don't move. The other two guys are stepping together, driving in, and if they do this correctly, that guy should be shot up because they're hitting and rolling their heads straight up. So this is just a double team drill. And we try and get in and roll the hips, and they try not to move. And you can see if they do this correctly, the guy goes up in the air. They come off, drive up, drive him back. Come in, drive, and again, I think this guy, oops. This, these two guys are too light, and they're giving ground. These are actually two varsity guys against two JV guys, I believe. So they're, they're not given too much ground. They're giving too much ground. So again, we're trying to get our hips rolled. Now, if you're not seeing the hip roll, move the defensive guys back further. <coughs> move them back further, because that's going to force them to stay lower longer and then to get underneath. So again, doing this double team drill, it's, I, I think it's working to try and get their, their hips rolled and move. OK, 
Okay? Then we do a half combo. I, I got this from the, the Badgers a few years ago. And basically, if you guys are using combos, <coughs> we're always working that one-on-one. -on -one, but what about the other guy that's supposed to be trying to overtake this? So what we're doing is now we're doing the one-on-one -on -one drill, but now it's the other guy, and it's the half combo. So basically, it's the guy that's trying to, Rick, can you come here for a second? You said the same thing. Basically, what it is, is if Rick is the defensive lineman, and I'm the one that's supposed to get to the linebacker, what I'm working out is the mid-chest here, and I gotta keep my outside arm free and my hips square as I'm watching the linebacker. So I'm just right here, driving up, keeping this outside arm free, just driving up, trying to watch that guy. Because as soon as that linebacker comes over the top, then I can come off. So now, I had never worked this before. I'd always worked the combo, but I had never worked this part. So I, I got actually from Bostad. Bostad, why aren't you working that side? Bang. So now, we do what's called the half combo drill. Basically, I've set it up the same way. Hey, half combo. Everybody's going to do it on my old line. Tackle, tight ends, everybody. So we set it up the same way. We're going to have a cross face. Maybe, sorry, Rick. Maybe I'm here and this guy comes across. Now he's mine. Now my partner's got to go to the linebacker. So I've got to work that too if I'm seeing that. So working that. Maybe the guy's going to rock away from me. So I gotta be able to do this. So now, here's our calf combo. I'm looking to make sure the guy's head's square, head, uh, hips are square and his outside arm is free. Once you put your arm down here, you're, you turn your hips and now you're not able to get to the linebacker. Because if you come here and the linebacker goes there, how are you gonna overcome it? You can't, you can't. So we work the half combo now. Still using the boards, keeping the outside arm free. If I know that we're gonna see a lot of this during the week, the cross face, I'm gonna put the cross face in. Hey guys, half combo drill set, go. Defense, you're gonna do this this time. Cross face, bang, now I gotta work it. Because we're always going to see it. Some way, somehow, we're gonna see some sort of different movement in this. So we work on trying to pump that arm, drive it, keep it out, head up. We always talk about having four eyes on linebacker. Me and my partner that have the combo. We two have those two. So one of us has to get to the linebacker. And in doing so, we have four eyes on linebacker. Keep the outside arm free, head up. Okay, now we put it all together. We did the one-on-one, -on -one, we did the half combo, now we're working together on the combo. And again, working heads, working offset, cross face, and then of course, now we gotta add in the blitz. You have to, because now all of a sudden you gotta work that. So again, I set it up. Hey, get in your combo, partners. Here we go, set up, bang, bang. The hardest part that I found is teaching him that linebacker would be a good dummy. Because if all of a sudden I'm playing a linebacker and these guys are comboing to me to go over here, and I tell this linebacker, hey, slow play it, bang, he's gonna take off, and what's gonna happen is that half combo, that half, that half combo is gonna come off, and that D-tap is gonna split us. So you gotta teach this linebacker kinda, I don't know, false key it, set hit, bang, bang, now go. Bang, bang, now go. Because that way, otherwise, he comes off his combo too fast. And again, if he's coming off his combo, this guy's gonna split us, and then, then you defeated the, the combo, the double. So you gotta teach those guys to be good dummies and slow play. So we'll do the same thing. I'll say, set hit, this group goes, turn around, that group goes. <coughs> they switch from O to D. And again, we get a lot of reps in, because. I only got 15 minutes. So here's the combo. And I have to give him a direction the ball's going. I have to give him a direction. So on this one, I say, hey, ball's going right. Bang, he's coming off. I still have the two boards going. They're stepping together, trying to drive that one. The one guy on that side is trying to get the one-on-one -on -one overtake. The other guy's staying square, going. 
Now you see how this linebacker waits? Wait, wait, wait. I think the cue for me on this one was wait till the guy gets to the end of the board. Then you can go. But now, is it always going to be like that? No. So what happens in a game is I told the guys, listen, if you're the one that's responsible for the linebacker, even if he's over there, so what? So what? Take him, bang, and do this. Knock him out. Our running back, who gets paid the big bucks, is going to cut back underneath us. Let him run over the top. Let him run over the top. Nick Clemens, who played for me, who played at uh, West, Western Michigan? Western Michigan starting guard, I think, um, was great at that because he was too big to come off and get it. So all he could do is get out, wall the guy off, and our back would cut back underneath. Now you have to incorporate the guy cross-facing and the linebacker blitzing. You got it. If you're going to see this, if we, again, scrimmaging Verona, bang, you're going to see this. If you see a 3-4 or 3-5 team and they're blitzing the hell out of you, you better be doing this all the time, both directions, both sets. So I'll walk up and I'll say, hey, D-line in this way, linebacker that. Set, hit, bang. Turn around, linebacker this way, D-line in this way. Set, hit, bang. I'll put him from in, in the gap. I'll put him. I'll put him in the gap. I'll put him heads. I'll put him heads on the front side, heads on the back side, in the gap, and I'll change up what they're doing. That way, we're seeing it all. If you don't do that, and the team is doing that to you, you're kind of screwing the kids. You're not helping them be successful on the field because they're going to come up. Coach, your kid keeps cross facing me. And you already knew that, and you didn't work it all week. So we we'll work this. So come off, outside arm free. Watching this kid down the bottom, outside arm free as he's come up to the linebacker. Now in this segment, I actually don't have anybody blitzing, but that's what we're trying to do. So during the week, we are working that. We're working the scheme. We're trying to figure out what they're doing. I should know that, so I'm doing this with the kids. You work it right, you work it left. And even with your partners, you're going to see it. Whether you've got a center and a guard, they're going to see this combo block. If you're working with a guard and a tackle, they're going to see it. Tackle tight end, they're going to see it. So you've got to work it with everybody in this segment. So again, we're going to work it. Now we've got the cross blitz. One guy going this way, one guy going back the other way. Four eyes on LB. You've got to know, hey, Johnny, you two, we got those two. Now you got to send it. So I'm, we're scheming it up so that we've got all this. So watching the right tackle and the tight end. They have a combo. They have a combo, the guy's playing heads. The guy rocks inside. Now my tight end knows, hey, the guy goes away. Now I'm going straight to linebacker, bang. Goes away, bang. Okay, now watch my uh, guard here. <coughs> Nose goes away, he's not under control. And he, he's missing the linebacker a little bit. But it, was, it started with his footwork. He did a crossover step. Doing a crossover step instead of stepping straight ahead. With his inside foot. Right tackle, tight end. This time the linebacker's coming under. Bang. So now our tackle knows <coughs> I'm coming down. These two have those two. He comes under. He's mine. Four eyes on LB. Tackle and tight end work together. Hey, he's coming under. Bang. There he is. Step together. Bang. He's coming under. Now, watch my guard. They're comboing back to here. Bang, he gets too thick. I say, hey, he's too thick because look at his outside arm. His right arm gets caught inside, and now his hips are square, and now he's going to miss that linebacker. Great job of that tackle and the tight end. Our guard, not so good. Left guard, tackle. They have a combo to the inside. Bang. Okay. 
Tom went in inside. This time he cross faces the guard. He's in a three technique, cross faces. Bang, steps, picks up the guy. Not the best block, but again, walling him off so we can get it. Left guard tackle. <coughs> again, the guy looks like he cross faces again. Tackle just steps up. Four eyes on it. Bang. Picks him up. Okay. Now we've got a linebacker blitz. Three technique cross faces. feet. Watch guys' feet. Hey, he's coming. He's coming. They better be talking. That's a big part of my offensive line. They better be talking with each other. Looks like the guy cross faces. Bang. Now, on the back side, we miss it here. Our guard misses it. He should have been saying something because the, guard, the center's covered and he probably can't see it. So the guard should have been saying, hey, watch him. Front side picks up. Back side misses it. But he takes himself out of the play, sort of. But bang, cross face, bang. Again, four eyes on LB. Got the center of the guard this time. Bang. And again, oops. Here we go. Watch his outside arm. See how his arm comes down, turns his hips, and he can't get square with it. That makes it tougher for him. I always want to try and keep that outside arm free. Keep that outside arm free. And if that guy does cross face to me, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, I'm here, this outside arm's free, this one, I'm here in cross faces, now I'm fully engaged here. And now I take it. So it's always trying to stay square, because if all of a sudden, if I turn here and he cross faces me, I'm beat again. So again, those are just things that I'm trying to watch with these kids. Okay, got to get our pull in it. So, what I do typically is I'll take all the centers, and I'll take half the guards, and we'll work our pull in. Whether it's a, a center, it's a center back, but whether it's for what we call fog, or OG, or trap, or something, we're working this. And again, I just set it up, we're working with our partners. Typically, I have a center and guard together. And if I don't, then bang, we're just separating. And all my centers and guards are here. On the other end, I'll have my guards and tackles working. Tackles might be pulling. They might be crisp blocking. So again, we've got to work it all. At this point in time, I typically lose the tight ends. They're going to work on the pass routes. So at this point, tight ends are gone. Typically, tight ends aren't pulling for us. So I just worked this drill. Guard needs to replace the center's foot. <coughs> As the center steps to the center back, we got to replace his foot. And I always talk about, for the guard, we're trying to get two asses deep into this thing. And what I mean by that is, if this is the deep tackle that we're trapping on the line of scrimmage, and I'm trying to trap him, if this D tackle has been taught well, he should be right there. So what, what I do as a guard is I'm aiming deeper. Because if I aim deeper, I'm going to be able to overtake this. So I always say two ass deep. If this is the guy's ass here, here's the second ass. I'm aiming deeper into the line of scrimmage, deeper back towards the linebacker. That's my aiming point. So I say, hey, two ass deep, two ass deep. Because if I come too flat, this guy's going to be here. I'm going to miss him. He's going to make the tackle. So it's two asses deep, I'm aiming deeper so that I'm going to meet him into the hole. So my coaching point is two asses deep. So we work this, this is the center of the guards. 
big a man. I'm probably down to two S deep because he was too flat. As a matter of fact, I might have I might have the guy with the bag actually back deeper. I might just say take another step back instead of being on the line of scrimmage. Okay. This looks like our tackles now, tackles and uh, guards. So we're working a crisp lock. Again, if you're running counter and you're pulling the guard and the tackle or the tight end and the guard, you, you need to work that with them so that they're getting the feel on that one. Okay, we're just running trap here. Our center and guard, we've got the center back and the guard kicking out. <coughs> the funny part about this one is that our guard here is 5'4", five, 5'6", five, six. Five, six. the kid he's trapping is 6'7", so he's, he's, he's got his money cut from him there. But uh, there's just our trap. So this, this must be our tackle, Sir Chris Watt. This guy was too slow. Our, our, our uh, tackle was too slow coming in. So he's got to get out of the way sooner. If you watch his footwork, he, sh he should be stepping more here, and he's not. He's got to gain ground. with our left guard and tackle. How am I doing on time, Coach? Yeah, come minutes up, Coach. Okay. Left tackle, left guard on this one. He was a little high. Again, I think our tackle was a little slow. He didn't take it. He took a step backwards. Our tackle did instead of gaining ground. <coughs> okay. So then, uh, what we'll do is we'll put a segment, and this is pretty big. We've done this the last five years. I guess, <coughs> is we get our pass pro in with our blitz package with our running backs. We had never done it with our running backs. We always did it with our line, but we never incorporated them. What was happening is, is a lot of our times our running backs didn't know where their fit was in, out, out, in, scan, whatever it was, now we put it together. So now we've got 15 minutes. And again, 15 minutes is not a long time because i got to get the ones and the twos in and the ones and the two backs. And it's bang, it's popping. I'm watching it. Our running backs coach comes down. He's making the call. He's calling it. Our other line coach is over there running the D, and it's bang, it's bang. This is the only segment that I don't film because I don't know where I'm going to be on the field. And I don't know how, how to get it that quickly. So this is one thing I wish I could film. I'm trying to figure out how to get it done, or at least we're in the same area. So this is a big part of our, our, our uh, scheme. Then we'll go into our inside drill. This is 30 minutes. And again, it's all on the line of scrimmage. It's called out. I kid you not, we got 100 plays in this segment. And it's, in, and it's 30 minutes. In the first 15 minutes, uh, Coach Rice is down, being the old coordinator, he's coming down. He's got the ones quarterbacks, running backs. He's calling out the plays quickly. He leaves, the two quarterback comes in, the two <coughs> quarterbacks, and we're running the same schemes. Now, sometimes what might happen is if a defense is running different fronts, maybe a 3-5 and a 3-4, the first segment we'll go against a 3-5, next segment we'll go against a 3-4, and we'll just pump them out. The next time around, when coach comes back, bang. The next time, on Tuesday, we'll do the opposite. And Wednesday, we'll do the opposite, if that makes sense. So on Wednesday, Tuesday, we went against a 3-5 first, and then a 3-4. The next time, it's going to be 3-4, then a 3-5 on Wednesday. That way, the tight ends are seeing strong and weak side. Quarterbacks are seeing both. Fullbacks are seeing full. Tailbacks are seeing both. We kick this out, and again, it's fast. So this is kind of like uh, this little scheme of what we're doing. I'm standing back here. We're just running these plays. The old line is actually right behind me. You can't see them quite. 
but they're in there. We're just running in place. We do have a little motion because our motion is taking effect in this week against this team. Now, this is our game field because it's playoffs. No lights on our practice field. So we're having to film from the press box here. Typically, we would be behind so I can see a better angle of this. Okay. So we're just, I mean, this is, this is just part of our clip. And, it, and it's really about this fast. We're in and out. Then we'll come together and we'll go team and we'll run our teams. We'll start off with our lates. We'll do our, so our lates are our draws, screens, anything like that. And then we'll go to the <coughs> game, our three step and five step. We'll do our run play action. Um, I forgot to mention on Tuesday nights uh, for 15, 20 minutes, we'll also do our two minute drill. So our two minute is just up and down the field, up and down the field, running it. And we're running the clock. We're running, hey, we got one, one timeout. We've got 58 seconds, whatever coach says, bang. We'll call penalties. Uh, we'll have a ref, one of our coaches, and we'll just run this game. So then Thursday night is basically just a walkthrough of everything that we've done. Again, if I have anything that I needed to correct, I will make sure on Thursday before practice that we have all those adjustments up. And if I saw a blitz that we missed or something, I'll have our coach call, hey, do one of these blitzes during our team tonight. Just so I know I feel comfortable, I can sleep well on Thursday nights going into Friday's game that we picked it up and we knew what we were doing. <coughs> so, and then this gets us to Thursday and we're just running our walk. Questions? Comments? I do have a drill tape that I'll sell for ten dollars if you want one. It had all those drills. There is no talking on it. It goes through all those same drills, labeled just like I had. If you want one, 